Welcome to The Daily Word. I'm really glad that you've joined me. Thank you for doing that. And for today's Daily Word, we're in Matthew chapter 22, uh, where in verse 23, we begin to read about a discussion, debate, and altercation between Jesus and a religious group called the Sadducees. Now, this is a group that, among other beliefs, they believe that there was no resurrection of the dead that once you die, you're dead, that your relationship with God really has only an impact for this life. That's all there is, right? And they come to Jesus, and their argument uh, against Jesus is what actually lots of people who are opposed to the faith will do. They'll, uh, they, they essentially sow a ridiculous story. It's a story that's related to what's called Leverite marriage, where in the ancient world, in Judaism, there was a requirement that if your brother were to die, you say you're a man, you have a brother, if your brother were to die before he has children, that you were to actually marry your brother's wife and that any children that would come of that union would actually be your your brother's children so you would essentially be caring for his wife uh, and you would be providing him with a, with a lineage with children and so they saw the story this sort of hypothetical deal that says that okay there's one brother and he dies and then another one and he dies and another and another and, and, and then they say okay so in the resurrection whose husband will she be and Jesus' response is this, beginning in verse 29. Jesus replied, Your mistake is that you don't know the Scriptures and you don't know the power of God. For When the dead rise, they will neither marry nor be given in marriage. In this respect, they will be like the angels of heaven. And, and I want to focus in on just, just two aspects here that that really Jesus names as the real problem for them in misunderstanding this, this core basic truth about life and eternity. He says, first of all, you don't understand the Scriptures. You don't know the Scriptures. And this would have kind of been news to them because they, I'm sure, considered themselves to be experts in the Scriptures. It's not that they hadn't read the Word, that they hadn't been in the Word, they hadn't studied it, he says they don't know it. They don't really understand it. And the question is, why? And essentially, if we could put it in a nutshell, the issue is this. When we go to the Scriptures, the, the in, interpretive method, if you will, is that we allow the Scriptures to interpret the Scriptures. We read the Bible as a whole, uh, the whole counsel of God. And, and we allow one scripture to interpret another so that we can get to the truth of God, that there is this belief behind it, which is, is true, that the Bible is coherent and that God's revelation can be understood. But you can't just lift one verse out of the context that it's in immediately but also as a whole, that we need to read and understand and, and get a sense of the whole tenor of Scripture. And, and the problem here is that quite often we will come to the Scriptures not saying, what does the Bible say? I am yielded to the Bible. But, you know, folks will come to the Bible and, and they will have a preconceived notion in mind Maybe not even consciously, but when they, you know, when they, when we get to a certain place and we're like, oh, I don't know if I agree with that. Ah, I don't know about that. You see, when we come with preconceived notions, we actually begin to manipulate the scriptures. We, we begin to shape and form the scriptures after our ideas, when in fact, the only appropriate way to read the Scriptures is yielded and allowing God's Word to shape and form us so that we run into one of those places and we say, ooh, gosh, I don't know about that. I don't know that I agree with that. 
the next the next sentence to run through our minds as believers should be um, but this is God's word and I want to under, I want to really understand this I want to dig in I want to trace this issue whatever it may be throughout the whole counsel of God and and then I will be shaped by God's word I'm going to I'm going to lean not on my own understanding. I'm going to trust in the Lord with all my heart. I'm going to trust His revealed Word. So first issue is that they, they don't understand the truth of the resurrection of the dead. First of all, because they don't understand the Scriptures. They don't know the Scriptures. They've just picked out the ones that agree with them, and, and they can kind of manipulate them to make them say what they want. Second issue, he says, is that you don't know the power of God. Scripture says uh, in 2 Timothy 3.5, it's very possible to have the form of religion but deny or miss out on or turn away from the power of God. And so what, what's, what's this about? Uh, the power of God is to know the movement of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And the, the way that that happens is not very complicated. It is the result of the new birth in Jesus Christ. When we declare our faith, our trust in Him, when we receive Jesus as Lord, the Scriptures declare the Lord promises that we will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit dwelling in us. That is the new birth. It is to come alive in God. It is to be born again into a new type of life in the Spirit. And if, if we are yielded before God, if we have a childlike faith where we know that we come with nothing to God and we just rest in God's arms and we trust in Him, we will know the movement of God's Spirit. We can resist. We can stifle. We, we can hinder the, the work of the Spirit in our lives. And indeed, that's what they were doing. The Spirit was leading them and w would show them how to understand this issue of the resurrection from the Scriptures, but they are resisting the Spirit. They are stifling the work of the Spirit. And so the call for us is, number one, to come before the Word humbly and determine that the Word will shape me, not vice versa. And also that we would come before the Word of God and we would live our lives humbly before God yielded to God with, uh, you know, our knee bent before God, acknowledging Him as the King and, and, and therefore knowing the movement of God, of His Spirit in our lives, leading, guiding us, empowering us to live our lives for Jesus Christ. May it be so in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And until we speak again, may God bless you and keep you.